Welcome back to my channel, The m m Life. My name is Camry, and I'm so, so excited to be back with you all. Um, for those of you who do not know me or who are new to my channel, uh, my name is Camry. I am currently a third year medical student. Wow, time is flying. Um, and this is The m m Life Medicine and Ministry, where I talk about my journey to med school, as well as kind of taking you along on my journey of discovering what ministry means for me. Um, as kind of a young Christian finding my way um, in that regard. So welcome. Um, this video is kind of my intro back. I've gotten a couple new subscribers since I last posted um, and I've been away for a while. So I kind of want to give you guys an update and tell you where we are and then kind of talk about one little thing in medicine that we all know we have to take at some point um, and that is step one. So the last video I posted was probably about six months ago, um, and it was entitled The Problem with Purity Culture, Where the Church Gets It Wrong. And if you're interested in that, I'll go ahead and leave a link to it up here in the cards. Um, but if not, feel free to keep watching. Um, and that was the last video I posted. I even posted about it on my Instagram, The M&M Life. If you're not following me there, I'll go ahead and leave that there. You can follow me there as well as my personal Instagram. Um, so that was the last video I recorded um, and that was because I was going into Dedicated. If you don't know what Dedicated is, it is a certain time set apart in the medical school curriculum where you are not taking classes, um, you're not on rotations or anything, and your literal job is to study for step one. Step one is administered by the NBME, the National Board of Medical Examiners, um, and it is basically your first major board exam to become a doctor. Um, and so step one is this exam that is, honestly, don't get me to lying, it's probably about a good seven, eight hours. Um, and I'm going to be real of what felt like pure torture. Um, and I studied for probably six to seven weeks. Um, and I'll kind of have a separate video about my study plan and things like that um, so that this video isn't like super long. And so I took step, I started studying at the end of February and I took step one on April 21st. Um, I remember the exact date because the day before was my best friend's birthday. Um, and then after I finished step one, got my score back, um, praise God, I did, I did well. Um, and now I began the third year of medical school at the beginning of May. Now, the third year of medical school, you're all done with preclinical years. So there are no going to class and sitting in lecture the way I was used to having school all my life, right? Um, so now I'm in the hospitals, I'm on rotations. And I started my third year of medical school on my surgery rotation. So surgery and OBGYN were kind of my rotations. And people say like those are the hardest ones. I had a rationale for that. Um, my rationale was although it's the hardest, the hours are also the worst. And I would like to wake up and go home when the sun is still up. Um, I didn't want to have to wake up in 3 and 4 a.m. in the middle of winter. And I go to medical school in a place where we do have a real winter, so I don't want to be driving in snow and things like that at 3 a.m. So that's why I did my surgery in OBGYN. We call them rings. Um, so I did that ring first, uh, just so I could get that out of the way. In retrospect, I literally just finished, which is why I haven't been posting, which is why I haven't been on Instagram, because it's literally taken all of my energy. And when I did have time off for my own mental health, it was literally just me kind of decompressing um, and reflecting and things like that. So that is where I've been, but I'm back. Um, we're kind of trying to figure out a new schedule that works well with the new rotations I'm starting. I'm starting now on family medicine and my pediatric rotations. And of course, I want to be a pediatrician. So you know, this is my time to shine, so I'm really excited. Um, I'll kind of bring you guys along on that journey. Um, but I just kind of wanted to come back um, and check in with 
my subscribers i know you guys have kind of been like dming me like where have you been and that is where i have been um so if you have questions about step one about med school Feel free to DM them to me. I'm thinking of either doing a Q&A on my Instagram, so make sure you're following me there, or either have you all send me questions and I'll do a sit down Q&A YouTube video. Let me know which one you would prefer. Um, but in the meantime, for the rest of this video, I'm just going to talk about the mental toll of step one. Like I said, I will do a separate video to kind of discuss what resources I used, what my study schedule looked like. I'll probably make my study schedule available to um, medical students who are currently kind of coming up on dedicated and trying to figure out how you want your study schedule to look. Um, so I'll do a video for that and also have maybe like um, an Excel spreadsheet that I can share with you all um, so that you have access to that if that's something that you want to kind of plan your dedicated time. So five kind of tips to keep you sane during dedicated. Um, one, warn people in advance. Um, and I know this sounds like what people know you're in med school, but um, I am the first doctor in my family on my mom's side. And then on my dad's side, I have, I believe like a distant cousin um, that is a physician. But the point is a lot of people don't understand the stress that goes into dedicated or goes into board exams or what even step one is or why it's such a big deal. Like, you know, we know, oh, if you want to go to a certain specialty, your score has to be a certain number. And I was a special case. I am the last medical class who has a number score for step one. Um, Every class below me is pass fail, so that stress might be a little different for you all. Um, but I still have to kind of deal with getting a certain number to match where I would want to end up and to not kind of close myself off based on my score. So that's a different level of stress. Um, my school required you to pass an MBME by a certain date and post a passing score before you're able to sit and take actual step one and so if you don't pass that score there's a certain process you have to go through and you get a chance to retake it and if you still don't post the passing score then you're getting into the territory of possibly not starting your third year of medical school on time so i have all these things going on and of course trying to explain this to friends and family on top of the fact that i was responding back to text messages sometimes days weeks later um wasn't necessarily free to answer phone calls all the time. Most of the time my phone was off or on do not disturb. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that. And looking back, I feel like telling my close friends and family, like, look, I'm gonna be dropping off the face of the earth. It is okay. Um, I still appreciate you calling to check in and I will um, check in as I can but this is what's going on in my life and I won't be as available and I need you to be okay with that. Um, that's number one. Um, and then number two, being okay with setting those boundaries. I know a lot of times as pre-med students, as medical students, you feel guilty point blank period because you're missing weddings, you're missing funerals, life still happens. Um, and you feel like, oh, I can't go, I have to study, I have to do this. And you start to feel a lot of guilt. You have to be okay with setting those boundaries and realizing like, I, I genuinely, I can't swing it. I can't go. Um, because if you have guilt and then you have people around you also adding to that guilt, it's not good for your mental psyche when you really need to be focusing on this exam that's in front of you. Um, and then also number three, having a really close tribe. And so like I said, not everyone necessarily understood the stakes of the exam, but they loved me enough to one, figure it out or like look into it or listen to my rants to kind of get an idea of what it meant to me. And I had cousins and best friends and family members who would call and just pray with me. My oldest cousin on my dad's side was like, when's your test date? Great, family fast, let's go. Like that is what got me through mentally. Um, called cousins crying because a practice exam didn't go the way I wanted it to go. And I was sure that I was either going to not do well on step, um, not match where I want to match. Like my brain, my brain sometimes would start to spiral. 
um, and having my rock and my support system there to kind of keep me grounded was also very helpful. Um, next thing, so my best friend in medical school, I love her. I post her a lot <laughs> on my personal page if you follow me there. Um, and we checked in every Sunday. Granted, we used to talk every day, but during Dedicated, I mean, I was waking up at 5 a.m. and ending my days at 10 p.m. and most of the time I was studying. So um, we didn't get a chance to check in as much. And so what we did was every Sunday, we sent each other a scripture, an encouraging message, um, and then just kind of checked in mentally to see where each person was, were we okay, was there anything we needed, what was going on in your personal life, how are you balancing it, and we set aside time, literally every Sunday of Dedicated, um, to make sure that the other person was covered, felt loved, and felt connected, um, and made sure that we just knew we weren't alone in this fight. So making sure that you have those people in med school who can identify um, with what you're going through, because it is a very unique experience, um, who can be there for you, who can pray for you, who can pray with you, all of that. Um, and then lastly, I did my dedicated time at home. Being in medical school right now in the midst of a pandemic is a completely new and different experience, you know. So um, I, the, re the remainder of my second year of medical school was all virtual and I made the decision to go home. And you have to know yourself to know whether this will work for you, but for me it did. Um, I finished my about the last couple months of my second year at home, back home in Maryland with my parents, um, at my parents' house, and I also did dedicated there, and then I ended up taking step one here where my medical school is, but that's just the way the cookie crumbled. Um, I had scheduled my step exam months in advance before I knew I was going home. Um, but for me, looking back, that was what I needed. And once again, you have to know yourself. If you can't study at home or your home family dynamics are different, then obviously do what's best for you. But for me, I'm an only child. So when I went home, the only people there were my mom and dad. There were no siblings. And of course, my best friend I've had my entire life, um, who's a nurse, uh, she of course lives in Maryland, but she understood what I was going through. So I didn't feel like I was surrounded by a lot of distractions when I went home. So for me, that was something that I recognized like, oh, okay, I can do this. And along with that came my parents um, really loved on me during this time because they knew how tough it was. So in terms of like going out and buying my own groceries or cooking my own meals, I was blessed in that my parents were like, we know what season of life you're in and we're here to serve that season and support you. And so. I didn't have to cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner or figure out meal prepping or do whatever. And then on top of that, I was surrounded by love. And so I would be in the office or in my childhood bedroom or wherever I decided to study that day. And when I got tired or sick and tired of stuff or a concept wasn't sticking, I could come out of my room and my mom is retired, my dad isn't. So most of the time I either had the house to myself because my mom was just out running errands or doing whatever she wants to do with her newly retired life. And my dad was at work, so it was literally peace and quiet. When my mom came back, if I was like, I don't wanna do this anymore, I need to go on a walk, mom, this is stressing me out. She was there to be a listening ear because my best friend in med school couldn't answer the phone for me to vent because she's studying too. Um, and so for me, that was what I needed. Um, and so really just knowing yourself and start to think about those things before Dedicated gets here. Because what you don't want to happen is for you to be halfway through Dedicated and say, oh, maybe I need more support, maybe I need to go home, maybe I need to travel, and kind of figuring those things out in the middle of studying for step. You kind of want to have that figured out beforehand, make your travel arrangements if that's what you're going to do, um, and then get down so that when Dedicated starts, you can hit the ground running. Um, these are just kind of a few life updates and like mental things about step one because we see all the videos of like how to get a 260 on step and blah 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 but if I can be real with y'all because that's what I pride myself on um, on this channel is not showing you the glitz and glam of med school but showing you the real raw truth it was torture okay like I'm, I'm not gonna lie it was 
torture and it is to this day one of the hardest things I have ever done in my life. Um, and so I say that not to scare you, but to say one, that you have a community here at the M&M Life here to support you, here to answer any questions you have, but also so that you're not going in blind. I think when you ask a lot of upper uh, class med students about step one, it's like this big, oh, you know, you'll be fine. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, you'll get the score you're meant to get and you'll end up matching what you're supposed to match. And yes, that's true. But also when you're going through it, you're like, no, how did you get through it? And so I kind of just wanted to drop this here as I kind of make my entrance back into YouTube world. Um, just to tell you where I've been, what I've been doing, um, but also to encourage you all wherever you are um, in your medical education to say, you got this, I'm a listening ear and be on the lookout for kind of new content. So in the meantime, remember to finish each day strong, but always remember to finish each day whole. I love you guys so much. Um, don't forget to kind of DM me with your preference for YouTube sit down Q&A versus um, kind of on an Instagram live. Let me know. Follow me on both my Instagrams here. I dropped them below and I'll see you guys in my next video um, where we'll kind of get into the nuts and bolts of step one, um, how to study. Um, things like that. Someone asked me before I went into dedicated to do a video on staying motivated with studying in general. So I'll have that on the way. Um, and also just drop any other um, any other topics you guys want to see. Shout out to my new subscribers and I look forward to interacting with you all soon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.